Well, hello everyone and welcome to the MIC Student Experience uh, Virtual Sessions. In this session, we'll be talking to Brian Ward, who's a student on the BA in Early Childhood uh, Care and Education. If you do have any questions uh, for Brian, you can use our chat function or our Q&A function, type in your question and I can put it to him at the end of the session. So um, we'll just be chatting about the course itself and um, just get some insight into Brian's experience uh, thus far in Mary Mackle College and on the BA in Early Childhood Care and Education. So just to get us going, I might just hand over to Brian and just get Brian to, to introduce himself. Hi, Brian. Hi. Uh In addition, hi Brian. We seem to be having the internet. Are you okay now, Brian? Can you hear us? Okay. Hello. Um. Oh, is this hi, connection any better? Yeah, you know. Perfect. So will I introduce myself again? Yeah, I just want to yeah. introduce yourself, Brian. I think you just dropped there for a second. The internet might be a bit weak there. Yeah, perfect. So, hello, my name is Brian Ward, and as Patrick said, I'm doing a BA in Early Childhood Care and Education. I've chosen this course because I have a particular interest in additional needs, and before this course, I actually did two PLCs in the course Early Childhood Care and Education with additional needs. And in those courses, I studied a lot on additional needs and really did find that that's the area I want to go. And from there, from completing my level six, I became a direct entry into second year of this course. And my interest still lies in the area of additional needs and my goal of this is to hopefully do well enough in this course to move on and do a master's in special ed in Mary I also. Okay that's that's uh, great Brian. Um, I suppose very interesting your, your background there that you came into the special entry route and I suppose maybe that's something to, to mark maybe for some students who might be worried that they wouldn't get the points for the program or you know there is alternative routes into it. Um, I suppose coming in through that route, Brian, did you how did you find the transition uh, to third level? Was it very different from from secondary school or maybe you were working for a while or how did you find it? The transition, to be honest, I think I was fearing it more than I should have. When I moved into the course, there was also other students that had direct entry into second year and immediately we were all drawn together into a group and we also did join like a group chat and a Facebook group of our entire year and that helped dramatically and I know you've probably heard this so many times from all the other students but if you just ask you won't be far off finding an answer because people are amazing in the course. Everybody is so helpful and as I said about the group chat, if you want to know anything, you can put a message in there and someone's bound to know something and you'll always get a reply and it's just amazing how helpful they are as well as the facilities that they offer. Like I personally have dyslexia and I done my first semester in Mary I without accessing supports mainly because I thought I'd be okay because of my PLCs and I didn't get any supports for my PLCs I thought so I thought I'd be fine. Quickly learned that Mary I has much higher standards and much more work to do so I really should have applied for my supports. So very quickly in my second semester of Mary I did apply for the sports and the access office were amazing with helping me with this as well as the learning support centre and I went there specifically in the first semester and I didn't have the supports that I could have applied for and they were amazing in helping me how to write essay style um, because before that I actually hadn't had much experience writing essays 
and they were amazing as well as the access office in providing support when I did apply for them in the second semester. OK, so it's great to know that those supports are there, Brian. Um, maybe just touching on the access office first, Brian, for maybe people who maybe are coming through the here or the dare schemes who or who have a have a, you know that they may qualify maybe to, to that they might want to use the access office uh, facilities just what practical supports kind of in, in an everyday sense would they would they supply uh, you with me personally i've been shown how to use software to help with my my readings particularly so in word they've shown me how to use like I had to read loud function to text the speech. Um, I was aware of that before and it was helpful, but what I wasn't aware of was that in Microsoft Edge, there's also a read aloud function and they showed me how to use that. And it's been massively helpful, especially in the terms of reading PDFs and stuff, because with a PDF now, if I open it in Microsoft Edge, I can get it the uh, computer to actually read it out to me. And I find that very helpful because personally, when I read, I find I get lost a lot. I could end up double reading lines. It takes really long to read. I hard to actually sometimes grasp what I'm reading, especially when it's worded in such an academic way. I do find that having the read aloud function helps tremendously as well. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's great to know those supports are there, Brian, anyway, and that you're, that you're able to was utilize and make just things that little bit easier, especially you know when you're when you're starting off in college. You mentioned the academic learning center as well, Brian. And I suppose that you know there'll be lots of students that might struggle in terms of how to write their essays or time management or whatever it is. And the academic learning center does provide great advice and tips there. Um, you might just tell us your own experience of your involvement with the academic learning center and I suppose what practical tips and uh, advice they gave you. Perfect. Yeah, well, before I attended Mary I, I had actually never really had experience writing essays. I am especially academic style styled essays. So when I got my first assignment that was an essay, I was panicking a lot and I was trying to get help from fellow st like students on how I could help. I went to um, lectures and they all suggested the academic learning center and so I went there. I went there actually with two or three other students and it was amazing how good they were. Did actually, if you had a piece of work written and you gave it to them, obviously they can't do anything like to make your work better, but they can give you pointers on how you can make it better structurally, grammarly, all that. And I found that was amazing mainly because myself with dyslexia, I do have a lot of problems with grammar and stuff. So that's another um, support I get from the access office is that in exam situations, I will get a spelling and waiver, spelling and waiver grammar, grammar waiver, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. it basically just means that um, I spell it, if I have bad spellings, bad punctuation, bad grammar, I wouldn't lose as much marks because that is relating to my disability. So having that support from the um, learning support center to help me with those was, I, I can't even explain how helpful it was. I would recommend any student, whether they're having problems or whether they're just not sure if it's up to as good as it could be, I'd recommend anybody to go there. It's honestly a great, it's great support. Yeah, I think that's great to know. And I'm, I'm sure you probably agree, Brian, like, all these supports are there and you know students shouldn't be shouldn't be afraid to go and you know seek yeah. advice and you know at the door of the access officer the academic learning center is always open they're always ready to to, to um, you know meet and chat to students um obviously brian you came in 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 second year of the ba in our childhood um, care and education i suppose covid this year has kind of disrupted people's plans and i suppose we're all hoping we'll be back on campus in september and hopefully you know, we'll, we'll know more from the government and um, uh, the Department of Education in the next month or so. But um, how did you find the MIC campus, um, you know, the facilities, the, the, the grounds itself? What was your experience of it? It was 
Well, when I first went in, I was amazed by how big and how just amazing it looked, especially the tower building. It looked so modern and it was honestly amazing, especially coming from like a, a PLC course where I was working out of like an old building. So the facilities were absolutely amazing up there. How would I best describe it? They were top notch. <laughs> and the tower building was was very big and the steps especially was like a really good social area. Um, a lot of students would go to the steps at lunchtime and at the very bottom of the steps there's actually a shop that you can buy food, lunch and also all the supplies you could need inside the college. They've got books, pens, paper, markers, highlighters, page markers. They've, they've literally got it all inside that shop. It's amazing. And the tower step, as I said, it's one of the, it's in my opinion, the, the nicest building in Mary I. And then in the main building, and probably my favorite area in Mary I is the canteen. It's, okay. it's big, it's got a lot of spacing, it's got the food section, there's also another coffee shop at the other end, and there's nice couches inside there on the end by the coffee area. It's it's a lovely place to be and it's also a very social area where you can go and eat with your friends. You can also make new friends. It's honestly, it's amazing in the canteen. And the gym uh, area is also, it's pretty big. Um, overall, there's a big area to play basketball. Um, it's massive. There's a nice upstairs seating area. There's also a gym on the upper area of it as well that you can go work out. And it's honestly, it's an amazing, it's an amazing place to be, honestly. Yeah, I suppose it's good to know you had such a positive experience of the campus, uh, Brian. And as but like you said, the canteen and the uh, in the main building and the um, in the tower building, the kind of forum steps there really are kind of the they're the social areas really the college where you know students do tend to congregate. You might tell us, Brian, a little bit about, I suppose, what a typical day was like. Obviously, this would be pre-COVID now in the college, just for yourself and in terms of what you did in your lectures and so on. Yeah, well, when I was in the college, it could depend on the day um, and how early I start when my first lecture is. So I'll go with the day where I have an early start. I'd usually go in to Mary I'd go to the canteen. I'd it, depending on how early it is, I'd get a breakfast in the canteen or I'd have a breakfast at home. I'd sit in the canteen, I'd either have my laptop with me or I'd be on my phone if I'm only there by myself. Or if some friends are in, I'd sit with them and we'd just chat before our lecture, mainly chatting about college and how it's been going for us so far. As I said before, I've mainly interacted with the other direct entries. I just kind of um, gravitated more towards them, but everybody else was friendly, extremely friendly and welcoming and I did have chats and I did sit with other, other the other girls too and they were very nice. Um, so then you'd go after sitting in the canteen, I'd go to a lecture and depending on where that is, if it's the Tara building, I'd leave earlier. If it's in the main building, I'd go, I'd kind of take my time getting there. I know I'd be there on time and depending on the lecture, I'm from the top of my head, I, I'd have an arts lecture early in the morning and we go to the art room. And it's honestly amazing in the art room. There's two different sides to it. And one side I particularly remember we were sculpting clay and stuff inside there. It was an amazing experience. And to be honest, I just wish I was back in the campus again because I do miss that experience. Um, from there, You'd, it would depend if you have another lecture right after or if you'd have a break and depending on how big the break is, it might depend on where you're going. Personally, if I had a big long two hour break, I'd go to the gym inside Mary I. But if it was a shorter break, I'd just have lunch with my friends or if we don't, we're not hungry, we'd just sit down in the canteen or the tower steps and we'd just chat till the next class. And it was pretty much that true throughout the day. Depending on how big the break was, you'd discuss with your friends what you do, should we do this, shall we do that, and depending on how you all feel in the moment, that's what you'll end up doing, and you just do that in between classes a lot, and there are a lot of facilities if you want to, as I said, the gym is always available as well. 
Okay. Just following on from that, uh, Brian, um, so you might tell us, you know, how, how did you, how was your time management or, you know, what did you do when you're not in lectures or tutorials on campus? When I was on campus, as I mentioned before, it would just be a lot sitting with my friends and talking or going to the gym. We actually spent a lot of time in the computer room as well, doing assignments. A lot of time spent in those computers. <laughs> and yeah, they're also really helpful in the computer room. If you have any problems, technical issues, just ask and be sorry for you as soon as possible. They're amazing inside there. OK, and did you work while you, you were in college, Brian? Had you a part time job or uh, anything like that? While I was in college, I didn't have a part time job, but once we started online, I, I did get a part time job. I was able to work from home because I was always at home. I was able to, it was easier to get a part time job since working online. OK, and how did you find that then trying to manage that balance between your 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 coursework and um, I suppose working uh, working part or working in a job. I think you, did you say offline that you work in a bakery is it, or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, what I think a lot of people might overthink how hard that would be and it would also depend on your hours big time, but I didn't find it too bad. I'd I have I had everything kind of timed up time managed. I had timetables printed out when I'd have classes, when I'd have work. I'd always have those um, blue tacked onto my wall over my computer screen just so I'm always knowing what I need to do and when I need to do it. I was very meticulous about that and whenever I didn't have work, I had college and whatever free time I had, I, I knew when I had free time already because of the timetable I had made. So I think it was very manageable, but as I did say, it will depend on your hours, especially your work hours, because if you have a lot more work hours, then you'd think it would be harder to manage. But I believe if you make a timetable, have everything timed out when you're doing it, it will be much easier to manage and navigate through that. OK, and given that you have that, that food background, uh, Brian might um, maybe give some recommendations to our prospective students about places to eat, maybe either on campus or uh, nearby, near near the Mary Mackin College campus. Well, the canteen's honestly great. So I'll say that starting off. I love the canteen. I had that so many times. But off campus, I don't really eat a lot off campus, but one of my favorite places is a, a Japanese kind of restaurant. It's called Kyoto Sushi and Noodle. It's it's amazing. Their sushi is amazing as well. Their bowls of ramen is honestly, they're just, they're so nice that if I was to give any recommendation on a place to eat, it would definitely be there. Okay, that, that's a good recommendation, I think, Brian, if that's, if uh, you're into your sushi. Um, I suppose getting back to the course for a moment, um, you know, for prospective students who are watching this, you might just tell us uh, what exactly you've studied, I suppose, um, in your modules and your lectures this year. You know, what areas are you covering? Yeah, so a lot of what we're covering is, we, so we do a lot of placement modules on studying and doing portfolios on our placement. We've also done modules on social and legal aspects of early childhood. We've done on child development aspects, child health and well-being. Um, we've done a lot of courses on areas of special needs and We've done, um, we've also done a course on management in the area of management in early childhood. And we've done courses on, um, yeah, so as I said, a lot of it would have been like on the development of a child. So we have courses develop, um, completely, what's the word I'm looking for, devoted to the aspect of language development for children. We could have um, courses on other aspects of development as well. Um, social development, we've done a course on drama and how that can help with children. So yeah, when it comes to the courses, it is very helpful inside Mary I. And I can't really say what they've done in the first year. I never actually really looked into it. But 
I do know that from my level five and level six, I had whatever they were going to be doing in the first year covered anyway. That's why I was able to progress onto the second year. OK, and um, I suppose a lot of people, Brian, you know, prospective students, they might be worried about assessment and things like that. Um, would you talk a little bit about that, maybe your own experience and maybe some tips you could give to someone that's maybe coming into the course uh, in the next year or two? First tip I give is don't leave it to the last minute. <laughs> that's the first tip I give. Um, second would be really look at what the lecturers are looking for. Um, so in that regard, I mean, there's there's always a section in your brief that says um, what they're looking for and how many points are going for it. Really look at that section and analyze that. And from there, work on that and start early. Um, try to get a section done a week from when you get your brief. Do as much as like you can. As I said, don't leave it to the last minute. And I'd also recommend going to the Academic Learning Centre because they're very good and giving um, helpful tips and points. And even if, but I would recommend going there with having some work done. That way they can give you help on your work. They can give you um, gram, gram, grammatical help, structural help. And so definitely I would make use of them. They're honestly amazing. I can't stress enough how good they are. Yeah, I think that's great advice, uh, Brian. And did you get a chance? I know COVID this year disrupted a lot of uh, plans, but did you get a chance to go on off campus placement or professional placement at all? Yeah, no, I didn't. Um, I'd actually would have applied to go abroad on Erasmus and COVID got in the way of that. Um, then I was applying to go to a special school, but because of COVID and they also required a lot of other trainings that I couldn't apply for because of COVID and I would have been able to apply for if not for COVID, but I also would have been able to go on Erasmus if not for COVID. So COVID had a big impact on that, but I ended up doing um, the gold program offered by Mary I and it was, it was honestly, it was a good experience. Um, the lectures were amazing. They were very helpful and you kind of got to study something different. You know, it wasn't the same, um, but a lot of the lecturers were very helpful because in the gold program, it wasn't just early childhood. It would have been the art students as well, so they couldn't exactly tailor one module to fit everyone, but they did add aspects of modules to help. So by that, I mean, like I would have had a module um, and the lecturers would have found a way to incorporate early childhood into it. They would have went out of their way to do that and that was honestly really helpful and some of them even offered a way to do our assignment that was for the early childhood students, different to the rest. So we had just kind of different headings to write under in terms of our assignment and it was honestly amazing how helpful and how accommodating they were. OK, we have a couple of questions, Brian, so we might put them uh, to you if that's OK. Yeah. So first question in um, this person wants to know, you mentioned it a bit already, but what supports did you find the most crucial uh, in your uh, course? Sorry, what was the question? This person wants to know what supports did you find uh, the most crucial in your course or I suppose the most beneficial? Um, in the first semester, easily the Academic Learning Centre and from there on out that will also be a great help. And as I mentioned in the second semester, that's when I went to the Access Office and they were honestly so helpful. They set me up with Zoom calls with other people to help me figure out how to navigate the online supports and that was amazing as well. They um, set me up on Bookshare Ireland, which is amazing because they offer um, audio books as well that can help me with my readings. Um, they also send me up with Grammarly, which is honestly probably one of the biggest helps that I've gotten so far because Grammarly has been massive in my writing and it's, I can't actually stress it enough how helpful Grammarly was and the Access Office will set all this up with you and it's honestly as easy as that, like they will be with you every step of the way. 
Okay, that's good, good advice, uh, Brian. Uh, next one is from someone who's who's um, in a similar position to yourself, Brian. They're coming out of a PLC course and they're wondering um, what the biggest differences were academically and I suppose what you found to be the hardest and the easiest part of the course coming out of a PLC. Yeah, well, coming out, of, coming in to this from a PLC, I'd say, as I, as I mentioned earlier, I was ex I, I didn't think I'd need support because I got on fine in the PLC, but also the reason I got on so well in the PLC, I think, and I didn't need the support was because I was in such a small class, there was only five or six of us in the PLC. So with the class being so small, I think it's unfair to say I didn't really get the support because we had a lot of one on one times with the lectures and that alone is massive support. So I really underestimated that coming into the college. It's such a bigger environment and you've and lectures have got to accommodate so much more students and you need to realize that. And I believe if you are looking for support in that way, apply for them. Every bit of help you can get take it because the workload compared to a PLC it is a lot it's it's more and it's also going to be to a much higher standard than it is in a PLC so I'd recommend getting the supports as soon as you can and really putting your head down and really just focusing on the work no leaving things to last minutes none of that I mean really as I said earlier I would highly suggest you read what the lecturer is looking for in the assessment make small little notes it's extremely helpful yeah that's that's very sound advice brian um next question i have this person they want to know are there any facilities available um, to people doing the program and he also wants to know is there a book list for the course now you mentioned the facilities are you know obviously all the campus facilities are available to all of our students as well as all the different student support services facilities that you mentioned as well brian um, I suppose maybe you might say something about the book list. I suppose a lot of stuff is available online now as well, isn't it, in digital form? Yeah, well, at the start of every lecture um, you'll have, they'll always give you a recommended reading list. And in terms of a book list, that's pretty much it, I believe, because in the recommended readings that all the lecturers give you, that really will cover most of it. But it is a lot, a lot of the lecturers can give you a big reading list. Don't get overwhelmed by that because you sometimes it could be a PDF. It might be a massive book to read other. And I believe if you just take your time, don't think you have to read it all at once, split it up. Maybe read one of the things from the book list every week and it really will help. OK, that's good advice. Um, next one, Brian, is this person wants to know, did you feel you had an advantage I suppose in coming um, in from that PLC route, did it help in terms of your, your grades or just your knowledge of uh, the modules and um, the curriculum, I suppose? No, I don't think I had an advantage because what I would have covered in level five and six really is kind of what did cover in the first year as well of Mary I. That's, as I said earlier, why I was able to be direct entry in the second years because I would have just about covered what they wouldn't first. So yeah, I don't really think I had an advantage in that regard. Um, as I said earlier, I wish I applied for the supports um, because I didn't actually realize how much of a higher standard your work will need to be in Mary I. OK, um, next question, Brian, I suppose it's about maybe time management and just about hours that you might have. Um, would you give us maybe an estimation about um, how many hours a week a week would you spend on assignments and then roughly how many hours per week would you have for lectures or tutorials? Yeah, um, I think uh, since we've been online, um, I think it's, is it 20 hours of lectures, I think? Um, that's lectures and then assignments. I personally tried to, um, from the very start, take small little notes on what to do. I would read the module descriptors as well. And as soon as we got the brief, I'd analyze the brief. And from there, I tried to make small notes again in on how I'm going to do the assignment and in terms of how long you'd spend a week it really would depend on whether you leave something to the last minute or how early you start. The earlier you start the less time you got to spend on it every week 
the later you start, you're going to have to put a lot more time and effort in. Um, in terms of time, um, if we're talking maybe an assignment that's worth 100% of your grade, um, maybe say a 3000 word essay, I would spend maybe in terms of research, I try to spend four or five hours a week researching one. This is just one assignment. And um, this could be starting around week six and it would be less time as the weeks go on researching and that's when I'll start writing the assignment. And in terms of writing it, it could depend on how much research I've done, um, how familiar I am, um, how interested I was in this module and it could really depend. I can't really give a specific time frame on how I've done the assignments. I never really timed them, but it would really depend on how much prior research I've done. Yeah, no, I think that's pretty good, um, solid advice, Brian. Uh, next question we have, this person wants to know, is the Academic Learning Centre accessible to all students? Um, I'll answer that, yes it is. It's obviously available to all students on all of our programmes. Um, our next question after that, Brian, then this person wants to know, I suppose, where do most uh, graduates of this programme find employment? So you might just tell us your thoughts maybe on that. Um, graduates of this programme, I not really sure. I'm assuming if they're doing early childcare, they'd mainly um, be employed in creches or play schools after school. Um, me personally, I'm doing this in the hopes of getting a job in special education. That's me personally. Um, yeah, I, I think like maybe a lot of them are doing this as well and are like to apply for a master's as well. But I do believe most people that would do this course would get a job in the area of early childhood in a play school crash kind of setting. Yeah, I, th I think that you're correct there, but I think that's probably the areas where a lot of people would be looking to find employment. Um, we have a question uh, then on the professional master in education, the PME, that's for people who want to become a primary school teacher. Um, this person wants to know, is it better to do your level eight degree in MIC if you hope to do that program? Um, I'll answer that. Um, for that two year professional master's education, the entry requirements, you just need a level eight degree. So it doesn't matter what it's in or, or what college you did it in, um, but lots of our students on the BA in early childhood care and um, other courses like the arts degree, for example, uh, would apply for that and have been successfully accepted on. Um, We've another question then, Brian. This person wants to know about exams. Um, is there a lot of exams or is it mainly assignments? You might give your thoughts on that. Yeah, um, I can't say personally what it's been like on previous semesters, but seeing as I've only really been in Mary Eye for one physical semester and then from there on it's been online for me. I was only, my second semester I was only in Mary Eye for a month and then from there it's went online. And I've only had one exam. And that was in the first semester, but I believe I would have had more exams if we were still in physically in the college, but because I haven't been, it's all been assignments for me um, from there on out. So I've only had one exam since I started. OK, fair enough. Um, we have a question then about uh, uh, placement, uh, Brian. This person wants to know, was it a few week, few days a week, every week or a block of weeks? I suppose yeah. also this kind of disrupted your own uh, placement plans, but you might just uh, elaborate on that maybe? Yeah, well, um, when I was doing my PLC, it was one day a week, but since I came to Mary Eye, it was, we've had placements of a month of the semester, so four weeks, and then we've also had the placement of an entire semester, that's the whole three months you'd be on placement, but for that placement, I wasn't able to do it. As I said before, I was hoping to do Erasmus and COVID kind of messed with those plans, so I ended up doing the gold program, but I do know the majority of my um, my class had done their um, block placement for um, three months out on placement. OK, and final question then, Brian, you'll be relieved to know. Uh, did you find the uh, program hard uh, or did you find the program or the course interesting? Yeah, no, the program is definitely interesting. I myself had a big interest in the modules relating to special needs and whenever they came up, I was always really happy. I, really? <laughs> I, you know, I'm trying to express it here. Um, 
a lot of the other ones then where you're on a, talking about like the child development or child family community, they can also be really interesting because you will learn stuff that you wouldn't have known before, even if you think you would. Like I went into a lot of these lectures thinking, oh, I, I know a lot of this, but no, I really didn't. Because like, as I said before, I would have like learned some of this in the PLC. So I was like, oh, I remember doing this module in my PLC. And then I went into the Mary I um, module of it and so much more detailed. It's you can't compare them. OK, um, look, thanks very much, uh, Brian. I think our, our time is almost up. I think you've given a, a wonderful insight uh, into the BA and early childhood care and education and also into um, I suppose student life on the MIC Limerick campus as well. Um, this for us was everyone that's watching this session was recorded, so it will be made available in the coming days on our website www.mic.ie forward slash CEO if you want to watch it again or you want to recommend it to, to friends or, or colleagues. Um, thanks very much for, for Brian to Brian for joining us today and that brings this session to a close.